Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Tina, for those of you that don't know me. So I am starting the recording of this video the day after our October Homestead Hangout live stream here on the channel. If you guys have never checked out the live streams that we do once a month, totally check out one of those videos with us sometime and hang out with us. It's really, there's no script. We just kind of bring our favorite drink and just chat all things life, homesteading, homeschooling, um, some cultural, worldly things, and just what's going on in our lives. So that was really fun last night. We had a really good turnout. And from that video, um, we talked a lot about uh, what is going on in our life right now. So as you guys know, we are getting ready to move to Alaska. And something that I shared with everybody on the live stream last night is we are actually going up to Alaska earlier than we had anticipated. So Joe is taking Parker and I up to Alaska in March, which is just in a few short months here. We, in an effort to uh, make sure our cabin that we just bought is not sitting vacant for too long, Parker and I are gonna go ahead and go up there, get settled in, kind of start unpacking and everything while Joe comes back to Virginia and finishes out his retirement here with the military. After that, he will join us shortly after. So. We have been in prep mode big time here on the property. We actually listed our house for sale and we already have a buyer, some really great buyers. I'm super excited about the people that we decided to get under contract with. We had a lot of interest and it just so happens that the buyers um, were actually the very first showing that we had on the property. They made an offer the next day, gave us everything we wanted and so why wouldn't we take that, right? So one of the things we talked about on the live stream last night was um, if you guys would like for me to share some tips and tricks with you on kind of getting your property ready for sale. I am also a realtor. Uh, I've, I think I've mentioned that a couple times in some videos, but maybe not uh, enough to where people really know that, but I am a realtor. I have been for almost eight years. I represent buyers and sellers, and we have actually sold four houses here in Virginia ourselves, um, personal homes and a home that we flipped as well. So I've sold quite a few houses, and as a consumer, as a realtor um, representing clients, I know what looks good, I know what needs to happen, and I know what's gonna help that property sell fast. So, so I thought I would share some of those tips with you guys today in this video, just while we're um, hanging out and getting ready to actually take a load of items to our storage unit. We are decluttering, we're packing, we're getting everything ready to go. We're going from almost a 1900 square foot home down to a adorable 600 square foot cabin. So there's a lot of cleaning out that has to go on, a lot of downsizing. So I'm gonna take you guys along with us today as we start some of that. And while we're doing that, I'll share some of my best tips and tricks with you on getting your house ready to sell and the best way to market that property. So one of the very first tips that I have for you guys when you're showing your property and it's on the market for sale and you've got buyers scheduled to walk through is make your bed. This is not cute. This does not show a house well. And when you are listing your property for sale, it needs to show well. It needs to be clean. It needs to smell good. It's really important that everybody gets up early on the days that you have showings, the beds get made, the carpets get vacuumed, nice vacuum marks in the carpet look really good, shows that the house is clean, especially if you have animals like cats and dogs. Buyers like to see that they're purchasing a home that's been well taken care of and that it's clean. So make sure that the kids know, hey, we're gonna get down and crazy here for a little while while the house is on the market until you got that buyer and you're under contract. You need to make sure that all the beds are made every morning when you wake up, all the rooms are tidy, shoes are stacked neatly in the closet. Everything looks really good for those showings. So I'm gonna show you guys my messy room right now. Uh, no judgment. On my videos, I usually kind of pick up a little bit before I film. I don't like you know, all my craziness to be hanging out. But right now, this is what my bedroom looks like, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I have a show ready, cleaned up, ready for pictures for our listing. All right, so this is my bedroom right now. Hot mess, right? The dog beds are out, can't even hardly see the floor. <laughs> Look at these lazy eyes. 
so we've got a bunch of stuff over here on the dresser. We've got some random, I don't even know what Joe has over there, some Pelican case or something. The bed is not made. There's charger cords hanging out. We've got some documents on the floor, shoes, clothes. This is Joe's chair. Oh my goodness. Holla. Can anybody out there relate? Does your spouse have a chair? You can't even tell that there's actually a chair under here. This is where Joe puts all of his clothes when he comes home and changes. So this cannot look like this. This is not going to show well when you have buyers coming to look at the property, right? So let me show you how I clean this space up and how it looked after we got everything ready for our photos. As you can tell, everything is cleaned up. All the personal items are put away neatly. The bed is made and I've got the window blinds open, the lights on. That helps everything to look nice and airy and bright. I even put the clock away that was on the dresser just to make things look depersonalized and make it look really nice for the showings. Here's another example for you guys. This is mine and Joe's bathroom attached to our bedroom. This isn't filthy dirty, right? But it's definitely lived in. Um, I, Joe has his chair and I have my towel rack. This is where I hang my hoodies, my sweaters, um, our bath towels and things like that. Um, I hang my bras on the back of the bathroom door. Can't have that. <laughs> so you gotta grab all these clothes, get them put away, and you never know when the buyers come through what they're gonna look at. They're, they might look behind the door. You don't want them seeing your bras back there. They might even look down in your cupboards. So just doing a quick straightening of your cupboards. This one isn't too bad right now, but you don't want them to open up the cupboard and just see all kinds of craziness. Just give it a quick organizing so that it looks nice when they come and show the property. We've got some toothbrushes, some foot cream that Joe uses. I've got some of my random uh, essential oils, my contact case, some makeup sitting out, my face wash over here our laundry basket, which is like totally gross, right? Buyers don't wanna see that. Yeah, is that a reality? You have dirty clothes? Yes, but they don't need to see that. I've got a scale here that's gonna go in the closet. That doesn't need to be out. A box of tissue. I mean, it's just random stuff, right? So I'm clean your baseboards, you guys. The baseboards get disgusting, you guys know that. And sometimes after you've lived in a space for so long, it's a good idea to go through the house and just touch up all the molding with fresh paint because it really pops, it makes it look nice and clean. Make sure your mirrors are all clean, your counters, your sinks, polish your chrome. So I'm gonna show you guys how I clean up this space as well to get it ready for our showings. I ditched all of the hanging clothes on the towel rack, put the laundry basket somewhere else, and a simple little centerpiece on the counter like a plant and a cute little pitcher will look really nice. The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was your kitchen. The kitchen in the primary bedroom in your home is what is gonna sell that home. It's very popular for your primary bedroom to have an attached bathroom. I realize some houses don't have that, but if you do, that's definitely a perk. The kitchen and the living area is the most used space in any home. So this is really gonna sell the property. And I don't know if you guys are like us, but the bar tends to be the catch-all for all the crap all week long. I can't tell you how many times a week I go through here and I have to tell Parker, Parker, get your clothes, Parker, get your toys, Joe, get your this, get your that, right? The bar, you almost can't see it sometimes. Makes me crazy, but that's just reality. So make sure that you clean all the stuff that need, everything has a home, right? Everything has a home, your shoes, Joe's counting our extra change right now. Like these are things that are usually out when we're working on things, but when you're doing a showing, everything has a place and it needs to go there because you want your buyer to be able to come into your home and imagine their stuff in that space. They need to be able to imagine their belongings and what it's gonna look like when they purchase your home. A big thing with the kitchen, if you guys know you have showings booked for the day, especially multiple showings, I would recommend not even cooking in the house that day. 
day. Maybe prepare some meals the night before or take the family out for a good lunch or dinner because some people are really bothered by smells. And I know that sounds crazy. We're like, well, we've got to eat. Yes, we have to eat. But remember, this is only temporary. When you're selling your home, it's okay. You're going to be able to cook in your kitchen again. Your goal is to get that property under contract as soon as you can. So don't cook in the kitchen. And if you do, make sure that it's something that doesn't have a really strong smell. Like you don't want to cook a salmon lunch before you have buyers walking through your kitchen, okay? That's just common sense. Obviously, I have more things out on the counter when it's just an average day, like my paper towel holder, my soap dispensers, um, things like that. But when I'm doing a showing, I like to minimize the things on the counter and I put a lot of that stuff under the cupboards and kind of hide it for the showing so that it's clean and and they see that clean slate that, oh, I can put my stuff on that kitchen counter. My crock pot, my coffee pot would look really good here. You want them to be able to envision their items in that space. So I'm gonna show you guys what my dirty kitchen looks like, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like after I had it all ready to be listed on the market so you can see the difference. Mmm, we got some dirty farm shoes and some dirty socks. We have a ton of just random stuff on the bar, right? Random stuff over here on the kitchen table, just messiness, got some homeschool curriculum, Joe's backpack, a bunch of shoes. <laughs> I mean, on a daily basis, you guys, this is what my house looks like. It's not always clean, it's not always perfect. We just finished cooking breakfast this morning, so I've got dishes in the sink. Dishes all over the stove. Make sure that you use a good stainless steel cleaner and polish all of your stainless steel. I take all of my pretties and my pictures off of the refrigerator. I know we like to display the kids' pictures, you guys, but it's not cute when you're trying to sell a house. So I take all that down so they can see how beautiful their brand new refrigerator is gonna be. I even took my calendar down. Um, you know, I want them to see this pantry door without it being obstructed with my calendar, though my Alaska calendar is beautiful. It just doesn't really show well on this pantry door. Make sure your dishes are always done. If you've got a dishwasher, fantastic, because you can just load that throughout the day and make sure the dishes are always, always done before a showing. And clean out your sink, clean out your sink trap. You know, we get food in there that's like days old, that's disgusting. Your buyers don't wanna see that either. So just make sure your dishes are always done before a showing. So here's the messy kitchen, and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like once we got it all cleaned up. Once again, I turn on all of the lights, open the blinds for showings. All personal items are put away. I decluttered the kitchen counters, cleaned off the kitchen table, and it just looks clean and bright and airy. And that's the way you want it to look when you're showing your house. Remember, it's temporary, you guys. As soon as you've got a buyer and your inspections are done, you can go back to normal, because let's be real, who does dishes all day long and has their bed made every single day? <laughs> So right now, here is the living room, and I will tell you guys, this is a little bit more messy than what it usually is because we are in the middle of packing for Alaska. So we've got some donation piles going on. Parker's got some toys down here. We've got some, our big picture box and games that we're gonna go put into storage. So this stuff isn't normally out, but again, same thing with the living room. You just wanna make sure everything is cleaned up and looks good. We've got some Nerf guns and some of Parker's books out here. The furniture is a little crooked. Everything needs to be dusted really well so that it looks good for the showing. I take down a bunch of stuff off of my coat rack. You guys know coat racks tend to get really full to the point where you can't even see the coat rack, right? Am I the only one? So take a lot of that down. Leave a jacket or two if you want to kind of showcase the fact that it's a coat rack. But other than that, it's just way too cluttered and it does not look good. Keeping in mind that when you declutter and you depersonalize, this is still your home, right? So you can definitely tell that I am a canner, Joe loves to hunt, that's the type of family that we are. So you're gonna have things throughout your home that speak your language. So don't worry about getting rid of everything. We just wanna open up that space so your buyer can imagine what their stuff would look like in there. 
Sometimes I have clients ask me, well, if I declutter and I take, you know, a lot of stuff off my counters and even a bunch of my personalized pictures down off the walls, where am I going to put it all? So it's perfectly acceptable to do a couple of different things. You can rent a small storage unit, which we have done, and just pack everything up really nicely and put it in that storage unit to get it out of the house completely. If you have a garage or a shop on the property, you can take a corner of that garage and stack some boxes neatly in the corner. Just just to kind of declutter the house. You can also take a bedroom in the house if you have to and stack some boxes in there. Buyers obviously realize that you're moving, right? Because they're gonna be buying your property. So they're gonna be totally understanding that there's some boxes um, possibly stacked up in a corner somewhere. It's really important though to depersonalize your house as much as you can. Some people get offended by this and they're like, what? I'm not taking down my great great grandma's photos and all my baby pictures and the art from my kids first, second, and third grade. You guys, you don't have to, right? I'm just trying to let you know that if you do, it's gonna help your house sell so much faster because that buyer is gonna come in and be able to imagine their stuff in that space. It's really hard when they come into your home and it's so cluttered, they're stepping over things, they can't see the floor, and a lot of times they can't even see the condition of the carpet or the flooring or anything because it's so covered with personal items. This is really important for the buyer to be able to see the quality quality of that home and the condition of that home to make them feel comfortable putting an offer in on your house. So go through and take one room at a time. Take some of your photos off the wall. Less is always better. I know we love our family photos, but less is always better, you guys. So take it down, pack it up, stick it in a bedroom somewhere and keep it there because remember, after you get your contract with your buyer, you're also going to have inspections that are coming subsequently from that. And then you're probably gonna have an appraisal inspection which is gonna determine the value of your home. So it's important that that inspector comes in and sees, oh man, this is a really nice house. And here's the thing, you guys, with inspections, if the inspector comes out and he starts seeing um, issues or that it's messy and that things are not maintained, it's gonna cause them to dig even deeper. So if you wanna try to keep things simple, the cleaner you have it, the quicker they can see that you're a good homeowner and you maintain everything, your air filters are clean, you've put new filters in there, you've got new caulk around your windows, your molding is freshly painted white, your carpet was just cleaned, you've organized underneath all of your sinks, double check to make sure that none of your pipes are leaking, these are really good things to do before you even have showings. If there's a leak that you didn't know about, you're gonna find it and you'll be able to fix it before you even have that inspection. So the other thing I wanted to mention quickly about getting your house ready to sell um, and for your showings. Whenever you have a showing, make sure that your animals are locked up in a kennel or you take them with you and you leave the property um, and allow those buyers to have their private showing. Now. You can go and sit on your front porch if you want to, or you can go for a drive, but it's really respectful to not be in the house following them around, hounding them when they're trying to do a walkthrough with their realtor. You're proud of your home, you wanna show them the upgrades you've done, but it's really not the time or the place to do it. They can see how beautiful your home is when they walk through. And not only that, they might be talking about things with their realtor, about their finances, about this or that, or things that they're going to come in with and negotiate that they really don't want you to hear. I've had both. I've had sellers that are like, nope, I'm not leaving for any of the showings. I'm gonna sit right here. And that is their prerogative, right? But inevitably what ends up happening is conversations take place and things are said that could cause potential issues down the road in the transaction. So I recommend leaving the home, even if you go sit on the front porch or go sit in your vehicle and allow them to have that private showing and then have your agent follow up with their realtor to get feedback on the showing. Right before showing occurs, make sure you open up all of your blinds and windows. Make sure every light in the house is on. You want it to be as open and bright and airy as possible. Do not light candles. So 
A lot of people are tempted to light candles because they want the house to smell good before a buyer walks through. But here's the thing, you guys, you don't know if your buyers have some type of an allergy or some type of you know issue where they smell certain things and it gives them a headache or it makes them not feel good. And psychologically, when that happens in your home, it's a huge turnoff to them. I, I'm telling you, this is not made up. It's actually very true it can have a huge hindrance on whether they decide to make an offer on your property. And not only that, you might like vanilla sugar cookie scent, but your buyer might hate it. What if they hate sugar cookies? And then you've got your whole house smelling like a vanilla sugar cookie and they walk through and they can't stand the smell the entire time they're walking in your home. That's definitely not a good thing. I've actually had buyers I've been representing walking through houses with me that are like, okay, I'm done, get me out of here. They can't stand the smell. I've had a few really bad showings in my time as a realtor. I've walked in, it's completely dark, all the blinds are shut, no lights are on, they've got candles lit in every room, and every candle is a different scent. You guys, no, it's too much. Make sure everything is clean and everything smells good and that's good enough. Don't bring all kinds of different scents into your house right before a showing because it could be a really big turnoff for your buyer. If you don't know how to stage a property, you can go online and just Google some ideas on how to stage your property for showings. Sometimes you've got too much furniture in a space that looks too cluttered. You might need to take some of that out and go put it in that storage unit that we were talking about or start selling it if you don't plan on taking it to your new home with you so that it's not cluttered when your buyers walk through. Simple centerpieces on coffee tables, kitchen tables are nice things to have. In the kitchen, having a cute little utensil holder, maybe a basket of fresh eggs and, you know, coffee pot or something is sufficient. Little books with a basket of fresh eggs on there. Green plants are lovely to have around the house, you guys. They just bring life to the property. So I highly recommend getting some nice green plants to put on a counter here or there. When it comes to the outside of your property, it's important that the property stays mowed and weed whacked. If you've got some landscaped areas that aren't looking so great, take a weekend with your spouse or some friends and put down some brand new mulch. Put in some inexpensive plants, maybe from Lowe's or something, that don't require a lot of maintenance, but that are really gonna make it pop from the street. And we call that curb appeal, right? Some simple uh, patio chairs. We've got some little wooden rocking chairs out front. Just something simple like that and maybe a really nice wreath for the front door. Keep it simple, but keeping everything cleaned up is really important. Decluttering your yard is just as important as decluttering your house. Take a bunch of stuff to the dump that you've been meaning to take for the last year or two. Get rid of it. Get it off the property. That way when they walk the property, it's clean and inviting. They can envision their items outside on the property as well. So as you can see here, we did some really easy landscaping with some new mulch and some cute little plants we got from Lowe's. I put a little bird bath and a bird feeder out there. We've got our little rocking chairs and a nice little wreath on the front door. And we did add a fresh coat of paint to the front door. It really needed it and sometimes that helps it to pop. If you have items that are conveying with the property, like appliances, washer, dryer, refrigerator, you're also going to want to make sure that those are cleaned out because buyers will open your refrigerator. If you have a science experiment in there that's like a month and a half old and you've been needing to get rid of it, you need to get rid of it because they're going to look in that refrigerator, especially if it conveys with the property and it's going to become theirs. They want to check it out, right? So make sure you take everything out and give your refrigerator a good cleaning. I hope you guys enjoyed those quick tips on how to to get your house ready to sell. As always, if you guys have questions or want an opinion on something, you can always message me or feel free to email me at blessedandbeautifulhomestead at gmail.com. I check my emails every day and I'm always happy to help. Let's go out and see what Joe's up to. I think we're gonna start loading up the trailer with some stuff that we're gonna to take to storage. So let's get to it. All right, you guys, so here's our enclosed trailer. This is actually the trailer that we are taking with us in March when Joe drives Parker and I up to Alaska. We'll be pulling this with our Ford pickup truck. And today the load that we're taking to storage is stuff that we wanna keep, but we are not taking it to the cabin with us in March because all we're taking is this trailer. 
and Joe's not going to be taking this stuff to his rental that he's going to stay in until he retires. So things like our chicken plucker, we definitely want to keep our chicken plucker, but we're not going to need that at the cabin right away. Same thing with our kayaks, just a ton of stuff in here that we want to keep, but we don't want to take it with us right now. So we're going to stack this all in our storage unit. So we made a quick pit stop. Joe had to run into the store, so I took the opportunity to get my favorite drink from Starbucks. You guys know I love the sweet cream vanilla cold brew, so if you've never tried it, I highly recommend it. It's delicious. It is so creamy um, and just the right sweetness. So it's a little treat for me today while we're working on filling up the storage unit. What did you get from Starbucks, P? Um, this thing, the box. Little protein box. Mm -hmm. What you got there? Got some cheese and some apples. Yeah. I ate all my grapes. Ooh, were they good? Yeah. Good. What'd you get to drink? It tastes, hold on. It tastes like Lipton tea. Yeah, do you remember what it is? Um, mm -hmm. lemon and black tea. Yeah, so it's lemonade with black tea. Does it taste yummy? Mm-hmm. Good. So here's our storage unit that we got. This storage unit is 10 by 20 feet and it's actually climate controlled. Here in Virginia, it's super humid as you guys have heard me say a million times. And we've actually had issues with um, things in storage growing mold and just getting really nasty and destroying pictures and clothing and stuff like that. So this time we decided to upgrade a little bit to ensure that our items are taken care of and put them in a climate controlled space. All right, so this is definitely not it. We've got a lot more to go in this storage unit, but it's a good start for now. I'm really grateful for this extra space so that we can tuck some things away here in the storage unit and get it out of our way at the property. And this is what I was telling you guys about. If you need to kind of declutter your house, but you don't want to get rid of certain things, getting a storage unit like this is something that is a really great idea. It can be inexpensive. You've got to shop around. Find the right place for your family, what you can fit for your budget. It's a great way to declutter and get things out of the house and just hide it away somewhere for a while. As we get closer to our big move to Alaska, I'm excited to share this journey with all of you. Thanks for hanging out with us today, you guys. Don't forget to hit that like button and we'll see you on the next video. Are you clear in the halls, P? All clear? Go, go, go. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>